Why would it be that after years of employing people in the international sector, across the board, all around the world, in like 20 different countries, um, would I not hire any of you? That over the years, I went and would advertise at all the schools that you go to. I'm doing international work. I want smart kids who are globalists and have like know a vocabulary. What did I find? They came in with a master's and they actually were smarter and had a vocabulary and in fact wanted more money and felt that they were ready to write policy making speeches. They weren't going to copy things. They weren't going to edit things. They didn't know how to mop the floor of international relations. They became too big, too fast. Because what did a master's mean from my experience, but talked to a lot of my colleagues and they'll complain about the same thing, that you went for a couple extra years, came out with more pressure and debt, and were worse writers than you were before, <laughs> but had a higher opinion of yourself, <laughs> while still feeling insecure, like, well, I really haven't done anything, but I, like, I studied a lot. So you have this dilemma, and I came to realize that, in fact, I want people who are willing to learn who can sort of deconstruct and start over, that no job is too small for them, but also no job is too big for them. This whole CV thing of starting with knowledge and skills, like they went to an Ivy League, they go to the top schools in the US, and they went and had a relevant language and a relevant you know, subject matter. It turned out I always hired wrong when I went after their CV and fell for it. We've gotten in this habit that's very inauthentic, of who you are and where are you trying to move and where, how are you learning. So what Roshan's going to put on the table, I think, is needed. And what you're doing here is needed. How do you network and share both your strengths and vulnerabilities as peers who are all should be a little insecure of A, how are you going to find your way in the world, and B, how do you make a difference in the world? So I shifted all of this and put it back to who is sitting before me in an interview or a casting call for a campaign coordinator. And I realized that there were four qualities I was going to look for. So number one, what you're going to detect, and you have to ask yourself, can you answer these questions? Can you prove this to someone who's hiring you? Are you a doer? Not just a studier, not just straight A's, not summa, 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 kuma. <laughs> Do you have evidence of doing something, starting something, achieving something, Make sure that's known. Number two, do you burn for justice? Like in this sector of breakthrough, like change, you have to have something that is about wanting, hungry for a more humane world. So fill in mission, vision, justice. But there's a sensibility that a lot of people, it's almost like they didn't get it from their parents or they come in entitled. I want to know someone's hungry, not only for work, but for difference. And the strong phrase, are they burning for justice? They care that much. It's getting at the passion. Number three, this came to me later, and you can never really ask. You have to ask it in different ways in an interview. Do you value inner space? Do you know your wisdom, who you are? Have you paused long enough to even know what that conversation is? Because for sustainable social change and justice work, you will need inner space and know how to breathe. And then lastly, it was touched upon here in the back, um, do you still hope? Optimism and hope. I will detect, and it is very disappointing, and you smart kids have to watch this, have you prematurely become cynical? That is the death of an interview. I will never hire a cynic. You might use a cynic as a consultant. Keep them out of the tent, delivering like footnotes on a project. Do not have them rubbing shoulders and hanging out with your optimistic can-do team. You have no business being so smart at your age to become cynical already, and yet you will be trained to are you doing? Are you burning? Are you hoping? Are you breathing? In an interview, I will get at back to qualities. It might be that the other things are checked. Like, it's not a bad thing you've got a master's or you came here. It is not sufficient and, in fact, could be an indicator of the traps that you actually don't have any of those four qualities.
There's something wrong with the industry. The education system that's churning out knowledge and skills, critique, cynicism, and bad writing. Yikes, what are we going to do? We need each and every one of you, as you heard, to be a change maker, to be on it, to be hopeful, and work your ass off until the miracles come true. Like, that's what we need for next generation leadership.